Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'ala habita fillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I thought it would be important, and I've been thinking about this for quite some time, and to talk about an issue which has plagued our community, and this is worldwide as a as a ummah, and ahl sunnah khas, specifically ahl sunnah as well. But in fact, it's an, an issue that affects all of us. And this is the image of Salafia as portrayed by some and the perception of many, the negative perception of many. And as just recently I received some comments, as I usually receive comments, uh, about people's negative experience, people who have left Islam, people who have left the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I know people personally who uh, have left, who have went to Salafi Masajid, uh, and because of the negative experience they had there in various places, especially in the West, in uh, the UK, in Brixton, in Birmingham, and many of the communities there, likewise uh, in Philadelphia, in LA, in other places, both brothers and sisters have had the same common experience of being turned away. Salafia is not an ex exclusive clique that destroys Islamic Brotherhood, but rather it should be a uniting factor. And that's very important as we hear the ulama always make it stilal of this ayat where Allah Taala says in Kitab al-Karim, وَاَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold on, all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. And our Shaykh Shaykh Ibrahim Rahayli, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, Walau Kariyal Ahla Bid'a, Kariyal Ba'aduhum, he said, he mentioned once about this ayat, he said, this holding on to the rope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that this is holding on to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning that we're ordered to unite upon the sunnah, not to unite on uh, hezbiyah or uh, political partisanship or uh, racial uh, background or nationality or whatever other reasons that human beings choose to uh, flock together and adhere together. Nor manahij batila, also not a false uh, false uh, methodologies, but whether we're ad we're ordered to at testimu bihabli lai jamian adhere all of you fast, we're ordered to unite, but we're you to unite on the sun of the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We can't unite on other ittiqadat. You know, we can't unite on being Sufis. We can't unite on being from Jamaat Tablik or Khwana Muslimin or. Uh, uh, takfir or in, in other uh, uh, manahij, but rather we have to unite on what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een were upon. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, uh, prohibited, wala tafarraku. So in this ayat, there is both nafi wa ithbat. There is the ithbat in the affirmation of holding on to the rope of Allah, and there is the negation of dividing and splitting into groups and sects and uniting upon falsehood. Uniting upon falsehood. So Salafia orders us to unite upon khair and goodness. And that's why I thought it would be most relevant to go through beautiful speech of Imam bin Uthaymeen that during his time, Rahmatullah that this fitna uh, was actually present. And even Imam al-Albani spoke about it. Imam Muqbil, all these great Imams, they spoke about it. But unfortunately, many of the Shabab, even some of the students, did not really either understand or take heed and put that into practice. And this is why we have the separation, the segregation, the hatred and enmity between uh, 
Muslims and pin many people who hate and spend their time and efforts and energy attacking Salafi, the Salafi Dawah for this very reason, because so many people misunderstood and mispracticed. They were guilty of malpractice, guilty of malpractice, that they didn't implement uh, what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam implemented. So Imam Ben Uthaymin, he says, he was asked, and this is in his uh, book, uh, a collection of his gatherings called Laqa Miftur, Laqa Al Bab Al Miftur. And it was under the heading of uh, the meaning of Salafiyah and the ruling on ascribing to it. Uh, in reply to a question which was asked, what Salafiyah is as a minhaj? Can we claim to belong to it? Can we criticize those who do not belong to it? or object to the word Salafi and so on. So this is a fantastic question and it deals with a lot of these issues. So let's go into it and hopefully it will shed light. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala replied, Salafi is following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Sahaba, for they are our Salaf, our predecessors, who preceded us, so following them is Salafiyyah. Following what? Following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the menhaj and understanding of the Sahaba وَتْبَعْهُمْ إِلَى يَوْمَ الدِّينَ So it's following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَيْنُهُمْ مَجْمَعِينَ How they practice and understood. That means all of the characteristics of Islam. And the way we're going to look at this, we're going to break down the Shaykh's fatwa uh, when needed to, in order to illustrate our point. Then he said, as for taking Salafiyya as a special menhad such that everyone who differs with it is considered astray, even if he was on the truth, and taking Salafiyya as a partisan path, then this is beyond doubt opposite to Salafiyya. This is what the great Imam said. And it's very important to understand this statement because some people try to use this statement as a hujjah against calling yourself Salafi. And that is not according to this and according to many statements of the Sheikh because when we want to understand the siyak of, of, of the way someone is speaking, the, the, the context of the way of someone is speaking, we have to look at all of their statements. We have to look at all of what they said and all of what they uh you know, the context to understand what is his, his methodology? What does he say in other tapes? What does he say? So that way you can get an understanding of the contextualization so you place everything in its proper context. So this does not mean that it's prohibited to call yourself Salafi or it, and, and adhere to the menhaj of the Salafi. He's saying that you must adhere to that menhaj. But to make it hisbiya, to make it to where if this one doesn't, he's on the hawk. And perhaps you're on falsehood, but you call yourself Salafi. Your actions, your Aqidah perhaps is even not Salafi. And perhaps your menhaj, your way of da'wah is not Salafi. But just because you call yourself Salafi, and this one does not, does not mean that you're on the truth and they're on falsehood. And that's uh, giving us a better idea of what this great Imam is saying. Because... As the scholars mention, al-ibra bi haqaiq lisa bi musamiyat, that the reality of something is in its substance, not in uh, its uh, not in its name. So just because someone says they're Salafi, and this masjid says claims they're Salafi, does not mean everything that's going on in that masjid and every practice and the understanding of the people is all Salafiyyah. And this is a big problem that we've had where we've had many people, and I've heard this as I mentioned countless times, many people around the world who went into Salafi Masajid, instead of being welcomed, instead of the doors open based on the menhaj of Ahl Sunnah of being, of, of being gentle and being kind and all those statements of having good manners, of, what did the Prophet ﷺ said? مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقُلُ فِي مِزَانَ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ خُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ وَالْفَعِشَ بِذِي There isn't a thing which weighs heavier this, on the scale of a believer than good manners. And verily Allah hates wicked and so, uh, sinful speech. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates backbiting, غِيبَ النَّمِيمَةِ 
and is suspicion that when you see a new person, even if they're not wearing the clothing that you're wearing, meaning everyone's wearing a short thobe, maybe they come in with a long thobe. I've been in, in places in New Jersey, and I remember when I was new to the Dow with a particular brother, and he criticized this old elder, older Egyptian man. Actually, they got in the debate, and it was about the beard, and he didn't have a beard, and they got into an argument, and he said, you're smoking up the masjid. And what he meant by that, he meant that your trousers are so long that, you know, we can't breathe because you're smoking up the masjid, because meaning that your ankles are in the fire, okay? The manners of giving him dawa was not the correct, uh, not in accordance with the medhab of the salaf. And this is the problem. So although he may have had an aspect of haq, but how he used the haq, his manners, his delivery of the message of Islam and the message to the, come to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was incorrect. And so that's very important for us to understand that we want to follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Imam then said, as for taking Salafi as a special minhaj, uh, after that he said, all of the Salaf or early generations called for unity and harmony around the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and did not regard as misguided those who differed with them on the basis of their understanding and interpretation that will except when it came to aqidah and or beliefs because they regarded those who differed with them in these matters as misguided but with regard to practical issues they were often easy and go easy going subhanallah imam bin uthaymin has given you a surah a picture of how the salaf were with the people's differences but what do we do we see people they pray slightly different than us and they are following one of the great imams. We don't say that it's necessarily correct. We may not agree with it, but it's the way you deal with them. Do you not allow them to pray in your masjid? Do you attack them? Do you uh, belittle them? Do you belittle those great, and not even knowing, most of the people when they try to emr bi ma'ruf and nahi in a munkar, command the good and forbid the evil, they don't even know what they're commanding to. They don't even know what, what is munkar. They don't know what, what haq and batal is. They don't know that great imams before them, even greater than our imams who we learned from, had a different uh, per opinion, perhaps based on ilm wa fiqh. So this is very important. We're not talking about Aqidah. So this is so beautiful, the statement, if we really look at it and analyze it. He said, you know, so they, they accepted the different, the ta'wil, the different ta'wil, okay? Except illa Aqidah. So this is not open a bab, a door for the Hizbiyin who say, yes, see, we're Ashadi, we're Diobandi, we're Naqshabandi, we're this, we're that, uh, you know, we should all be the same and unite upon that. No, that's not what he's saying. And the, that means that we have to have that united ittiqad, which is based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and understanding the Salaf. And that includes the, the minhaj, the methodology for understanding, because that methodology of da'wah, of how we call, the methodology of what we begin with. For example, why did I say what I said in the past about Nu'man Ali Khan and others? Because I saw that in their statements, the little that I came across, because I didn't, I don't follow them, I don't listen to them. But people sent it to me and they wanted me to listen. And what I found is I saw what appeared to be a belittlement of Tawheed. Him going, to, saying statements about it's not in the Quran and all these strange things. When this is what religion of Islam is based upon. Are you going to start with calling people who don't, who aren't even Muslim with the prayer? Are you going to start by just giving them good feel, good, uh, uh, lessons in in Iman and stuff like this, you, you can use those beautiful asloob, but at the same time, you have to call them to Tawheed. You have to call them to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the aspects of Tawheed, teaching Tawheed. Never do we leave the minhaj, the methodology of calling to Tawheed. And there's so much evidence uh, to illustrate that. As uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to Mu'adh, in the Kitabti Mukoman Minah the Kitab, for you couldn't awal the matter of Mile, a shahada in Lai Lai Law. Verily, you're going to travel, you're going to go to the people of Ahmed Kitab, you're sending them to Yemen, meaning the people of the Jews and the Christians. First thing you, you, you call them to is the shahada, is Tawheed, is La ilaha illallah. So that is Tawheed. And that's the call, that's the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. And that's what differs between the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah with Dawah to Ahl Bidah. One of the sifat. 
So then the imam, and what did he say? He said, but with regard to practical issues, they were easy going. I think the statement here is a little bit, the Arabic, they've got it a little strange. But anyhow, the Imam said, as we said, he said, then uh, that the... Um, because they are regarded with those who differ with them in matters that are misguided, but with regard to practical issues, they were often easygoing. So in the basic issues, the Salaf were often easygoing. That is the characteristic that we want to have as Salafis. If we say we follow the Salaf, why aren't we easygoing with the people? Why do we practice suspicion? Suspicion is going against what? It's going against <laughs> a, a, a great uh, command uh, and a prohibition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger salallahu the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said wa hadith. he said beware of suspicion but yet we have our masjid and we look at why is that sister here the sister is not wearing niqab the sister looks like this the sister this you know instead of a new opportunity to either open the door of da'wah or accept them you're, you're not there in the masjid to <laughs> to judge the people but you're there to worship Allah azza wa jalla you're there to worship Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially if you don't have the ilm to really give da'wah to people. And that's what's very important. This cliquishness has to be destroyed because it's not based on the book of Allah. It's not based on the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, And it's not based on salafiyya, the madhab and the minhaj of the salaf. Bin Uthaymin then said, but some of those who followed the path of salafiyya in modern times started to regard as misguided everyone who differed from them even if that person was correct, and some of them adopted a partisan approach like that of other parties which claim to belong to the religion of Islam, that is what is imperative for us to understand, is that Salafia is not Hezbiya. And often we've had many people who've yelled and accused people of Hezbiya, and this is related to an African proverb, a brother from, uh, who's Oromo, from uh, one of the tribes in Ethiopia, he mentioned to me many years ago, he said, often you'll find the one who's pointing his finger, his index finger, three fingers are pointing back to him. So how many people do we know who said, who said you are Hizbi, you are Hizbi, but three attributes of Hizbiya can be found in their characteristics and traits? That is something to ponder on the of Allah. Make sure you're following the Da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, Salafiyya, Haqiqiyya, Haq, but not following Hizbiya, uh, partisanship. In the name of Salafi, Wallahu Musta'an. This is something that is to be denounced and cannot be approved of, and it should be said to these people look at the way of the righteous early generation, a Salaf Asari. What did they used to do? Look at their way and how open hearted they were in the case of differences in which Ijtihad is justified and differences of opinion are allowed. They even used to differ concerning major issues, matters of belief and practical issues. This is what Ibn Uthaymin said, meaning that there were some daqiq masail al-itaqad. There were some issues, those rare issues that came up that sometimes they differed over. Doesn't mean everyone is correct. No, that's not what we're saying. Nor does that make an excuse for the Hezbis. For example, many people attack me for my criticism of Yasser Qadi. And in the future, I will detail even more some of the things he said in his writing uh, entitled uh, in the magazine Muslim Matters about Salafia, where there were so many errors that I wrote a 20 page article that I'm going to, I have never uh, put it out there, but I'm actually going to do it in a series of videos in the future uh, if I find benefit in doing so. So it's very important to know that uh, that Salafiyya is not a clique in a group. Uh, you know, it is not a Hezbiyya, it's not calling to you. And when we make and call of one another, when we uh, refute one another, it shouldn't be about because you don't take from my scholar. Because you're not blind following the opinion of my scholar. You can't say, well, Sheikh Obeid said, and, and you're differing with him, you're a Hezbi. This is what has been going on for years. Uh, Sheikh Muqba said, you're a Hezbi. 
you're a hisbi because you you know you 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 don't follow Sheikh Muqbil's statement on this. Even though Bin Baz said this, you're a hisbi. Uh, Imam Al Bani said this, you don't take this statement, you're a hisbi. This is the dangerous thing that we've had going on for years, and I believe honestly it's come from a misunderstanding of the Dawa. that the people were avoiding so much of these books that they have in their libraries. Some of the brothers, they know, they, they go into those books, they translate those books. They have so much, uh, um, uh, such a strong basis of knowledge. And they have so much knowledge around him and they have access to the scholars. But for some reason, the shaitan corrupted some aspects of their dawah. Even if they brought about some good, but there was some great evil and trials and fitna that they brought about too because of a lack of their understanding of certain Messiah. And that's what I believe it is. It's really that some of us, we really weren't steeped in knowledge, including myself, definitely myself, first and foremost, but many other people who are great, who people look up to and have hundreds and thousands of followers around the world, they have some uh, shortcomings in their dawah that needs to be corrected because they've split many more people than they've called to the sunnah, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's problematic. Then Imam, uh, Imam uh, Ben Uthamin said, you will find some of them, for example, denying that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw his Lord. And he's talking about the Salaf, how they differed this issue of Aqidah. Whereas others say that he did see him. You will see some of them saying that what will be weighed on the day of resurrection is deeds. Whereas others will say that it is the books of deeds that will be weighed. You will also see some of them differing a great deal with regard to matters of fiqh having to do with marriage, shares of inheritance, buying and selling, and other issues. Yet despite all of this, they did not regard one another as misguided. That is the most powerful thing that we could really uh, stop and analyze. And I want you to reflect on this Ahabitifillah and gain something from this. And the reason is, is that it shows that yes, in some issues, of Aqidah. This is what Ben Uthimin said. This is what Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. And this is what the evidence shows. That we say the Salaf were united on Ittaqad. They were. But there were some issues that they may have a, a different interpretation of. And when their differences regarding these issues were, it had to do with things la yaratib alayhi akam. That's what I want you to understand. That when they have these differences in Akida, these, these certain issues now, don't blow it out of proportion. Look how many people attack Shadid Muhammad, attack others when, when great imams before him said the same thing, but yet they destroyed the man's integrity because of this. They lynched him because of this. Wallahu mistan, and may Allah forgive us and guide us and, and protect us from Shah Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen and guide the brother Amin and forgive him and forgive us and, and all of us of our uh, any mistakes that we made, the many mistakes we make. I mean, listen to this Habitifillah. So when I said La Yat uh Rattib Alehi Ahkam, I want you to understand this. What am I saying? I'm saying that Ben Uthim mean is meant he mentions here he said, you will find some of them, meaning some of the Salaf, saying that what will be weighed on the day of resurrection is deeds, whereas others will say that it is the books of deeds that will be weighed. Okay, this is a difference in a, a point of Aqidah. Is it deeds that are weighed, or is it the, uh, uh, the book of deeds that will be weighed? But the point is that whether you follow that goal or that goal, it has no difference in your being closer to Allah. Nor does it have a difference in your practice. That's not going to make, the, all you need to know is that, uh, you know, your deeds will be weighed Yom al -Qiyama. Whether it's the book or whether it's the deeds themselves, that doesn't have any effect on you having sin or you not having sin. Because these were minute issues that, uh, and, and, and really dealt with interpretation, how they understood those nasus, how they understood the text, but it doesn't affect, but it does affect, for example, the Ashari who says uh, that Allah does not uh, rise above his throne. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, said uh, 
He rose above a stone. Ahl Sunnah says, yes, he rose above a stone. Uh, the Ashadis and other uh, other uh, sects, they say, no, he didn't rise above a stone. What it means is his stola. What it means is this. They make ta'wil. That affects your aqidah. That has an effect uh, because there are so many other things because it begins to negate those nusuls. So there is an ahkam related to that because in fact, they begin to, their ta'wil begins to negate those nusuls. They negate. They said, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, Yanzulu Rabbuna tabaraka ta'ala kulu al-akhir. That our Lord descends to the lowest third, of, to the lowest heavens every last third of the night. Ahlul Sunnah, we say, yes, we, we believe in the Vahir, the, the, the apparent meaning of that text, because the Prophet ﷺ said it, and we believe, and this was the minhaj of the Salaf, is that they took the Vahir al ahkam they, they, they took uh, the Nasus, they looked at the text in a, with the apparent meaning. They were very literal. They weren't literal in everything. They also looked at Hikmah, they also looked at other things, but their asl, the foundation of how they looked at nasus and texts, was literal. Where the Ashadis and other groups of Ahl Kalam, they look at things through their, uh, they make takdim of their aql. If it doesn't go with their intellect, then they might make a takdim. They might prefer their intellect and, how, and making, changing the meaning to what they feel is more suitable understanding of those texts. And that's a big difference how we differ with them in Minhaj. And so that makes a big effect in many aspects of your religion. So you see, يُرَتَّبْ عَلَيْهِ الْأَحْكَامِ Those differences, those differences, اختلاف الضاد, Those are differences that are contradictory differences. And that's what I want us to understand that أَحَبَتِ فِي اللَّهِ Ben Uthameen, getting back to what he says, Salafi in the sense of being a particular party with its distinguishing characteristics, specific rules in which the members regard everyone else as misguided, these people have nothing to do with Salafi at all. That doesn't mean Salafi has kawaid in a soul, of course. It's not what the Imam is saying. But he's saying when the people make this new type of hezbiya, when they say, oh, you didn't, uh, Sheikh Rabi said, and you didn't accept that, even though another alim on his level or perhaps even greater status than him had a different goal, and you chose to take his goal, you're, you're, that's hezbiya? I mean, that's, that's that you're, you're a muqtadi'a because you didn't take that opinion? No. None of those imams... Sheikh Rabi himself, who so much controversy is around, never says that. He never says, blind follow me. He never says that. He never says, be a part of my his, his. He doesn't say that in his books. I have almost all of his books. I have his Mijmu'a Fatawa. I've, I, you know, I've listened to enough of his lectures. I've seen him, went to his house a couple of times. I've been to, I never heard any of that stuff from him. Do we say the Imam has mistakes? Of course he does. Because the Prophet said, We all have mistakes. We all have mistakes. But the point is that the Salafiyah is not restricted to him. It's not restricted to Al-Bani. It's not restricted to Muhammad Abdul Wahab. It's not restricted to Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. It's not restricted to Abu Bakr as Siddiq. But it's restricted to what Muhammad وسلم, and his companions what they were united upon what they what how they understood the the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu that's what it is because if we were going to blind follow anyone it would be we would the most right and we we're going to call ourselves a new group instead of ashari or diobandi or naqshbandi we'd call ourselves abu bakri bakri or we call ourselves umari after umar ibn khattab radiyallahu ta'ala or khattabi or we'd call ourselves Something else, uh, Uthmani, or we'd call ourselves Alawi, uh, Allah uh, Mustahan, as the 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 Ashidman or Rafa, the sect like uh, uh, what's his face, uh, Bashar al Asad, a Shaitan, that he, uh, his sect, his group, the Alawi, which uh, you know are not even Muslim. So the point is, Ahabatifillah, what's very important is that we restrict ourselves to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we adhere to the characteristics that are um, illustrated in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that we do not restrict the menhaj to anything except for what it restricts to. That we don't make new principles. Oh, that you have to take this shit's opinion, you have to sit with these group of brothers, you have to listen only to these five brothers, their lectures, uh, they're in the UK, these ones are in Birmingham, these were in Croydon, these ones, you can only listen to them, no, you can't restrict Da'u to Ahl Sunnah to that. And this is what Ben mean is alluding to in his, his statements. And then he 
ended this beautiful fatwa by saying, as for the Salafiyyah, which means following the path of the Salaf in belief, word, and deed, in calling for unity, and harmony, and mutual compassion and love, which many of us lack. We don't, we totally forgot that. We totally didn't, we didn't even know. We, know, we weren't getting that kind of tarbiya. When a lot of brothers were studying, they didn't think about compassion and love, that these are traits of Islam. So what Muhammad sallallahu was upon. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with bitter with taqwa. With ta'awun ala bitter with taqwa, wa la ta'awun ala ithmi wa adwan. Cooperate in, 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 in righteousness and piety, but don't cooperate in uh, sinfulness and enmity. So he said, as with the Salafiyya, which means following the path of the Salaf in belief, word and deed, and calling for unity and harmony and mutual compassion and love, as the Prophet wasallam said, the likeness of the believers in their mutual love, mercy, and compassion is that of a single body. When one part of it is suffering, the rest of the body joins in, joins it, uh, joins in it in fever and staying awake. This is the true Salafiyya. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything that I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on this great Imam, Muhammad uh, bin Saleh al-Uthameen, rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatullahi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.